What kind of problem would make you take a perfectly functioning cruise ship and cut it in half? Yeah, it happens. This is not emergency repairs or some damage control. It's a deliberate decision to make her grow. And as strange as that sounds, it's actually a pretty brilliant move. This is the story of ship stretching, or as the industry calls it, jumboization. A bold kind of engineering upgrade where precision, profit and pressure all come together. So why do they cut ships in half? Imagine taking your car, cutting it in half and sliding in a new row of seats. Except here, the car is a ship that weighs thousands of tons. It sounds absurd, but in shipping, it makes sense. Building a new cruise ship today can cost half a billion dollars, but stretching an older one, if done right, gives you almost the same capacity, for way less money and time. Ship owners love that kind of maths. More cabins, more passengers, and more profit. And in a business where space equals money, a few extra meters can completely change the game. When Maysk stretched its older Panamax ships, they added thousands of TEU slots without building new hulls, instantly competing with bigger, newer vessels. And this isn't just for commercial shipping. In the early 1990s, the US Navy did this to the USS Cimarron, a fleet oiler, slicing it open and adding over 108 feet to boost fuel capacity. A warship, stretched under strict military engineering standards, then returned to active duty. If the military trusted it back then, that tells you this process works. Of course, this isn't just about squeezing in extra tourists, stacking more containers or increasing tank capacity. Today's maritime industry is under real pressure. From emissions rules, climate targets, even passenger expectations. Ships need to carry more, burn less and leave a lighter carbon footprint. Life at sea becomes routine faster than you'd expect especially in the engine room where we worked. Down there, it's always the same. The hum of machinery and the smell of oil and heat. Your whole world becomes gauges, valves and rotations. Although you're in constant motion, you can feel stuck. Living in this cycle for months affects sailors and it's even worse for submariners. Their silence isn't just physical, sometimes it's mental. And just like we check pressures and temperature logs, therapy helps us check the pressures we carry inside. We remember waking up every morning to take a run when we first returned on shore, just to break the cycle of waking up to resume engine watch. Sometimes all it takes is an outside voice, not to fix things for you, but to give you the tools to understand what's going on below the surface. BetterHelp is on a mission to make therapy easier. You just fill out a short questionnaire and they'll match you with a credentialed therapist trained to listen and offer practical, unbiased advice. All done online on your schedule. If you'd like to give it a try, go to betterhelp.com slash casual navigation and you'll get 10% off your first month. The link's also down in the description. By lengthening the ship, you increase capacity without touching the engines. That means more cargo per unit of fuel. And that's exactly what international standards like EEDI and EEXI are designed to measure. How efficiently a ship moves weight across water. EEDI, Energy Efficiency Design Index, sets strict CO2 limits for new builds. Then for the thousands of ships already sailing, we have EEXI, the Energy Efficiency Existing Ship Index. A retrofit report card. Don't meet the standard? You could get locked out of international waters. The result? Better environmental scores, fewer penalties, and yes, better profit margins too. And there's more. Stretching uses far fewer raw materials than building a new. Lower embodied energy, less waste, extended vessel lifespan. In an industry hunting for circular solutions, this is one of the few practices that actually delivers. Ships designed 20 years ago were built for a different world. Smaller ports, cheaper fuel, looser regulations. A stretch lets ship owners bolt on modern upgrades. Scrubbers, ballast water treatment, hybrid propulsion, smarter HVAC. You're not just making the ship longer, you're adapting it for today's ports, markets and climate pressures. This kind of operation isn't done on impulse. Before any steel gets sliced, engineers go over the ship's original blueprints general arrangement plans, piping schematics, and wiring routes. 
But paper isn't enough. The crew physically walks the ship, scanning, measuring and validating every inch. Because ships change over time and mistakes here can mean disaster later. Meanwhile, in another part of the yard or sometimes in a different shipyard, a brand new midsection is already under construction. It's built to spec, not just for fit, but for buoyancy. It floats on its own and it's tested like its own mini ship because soon it'll be part of something bigger. Now comes the operating theater. In the dry dock, a special system called skid shoes is laid out. Think of them like giant hydraulic trains mounted on rails. These machines can lift over 1,000 metric tons each, moving with computer-controlled precision. Before the dock is flooded, their electrical parts are shielded and their positions locked in place. If the dry dock is big enough, the new segment is floated in first. Then the ship itself is brought in, slowly, carefully, and aligned over the skid shoes. The dock is drained, the hull settles. Surgery begins. Every carpet, bed, fitting in the area to be cut is removed. Cables are cut and labelled. HVAC ducts and pipe systems are traced and tagged. Paint coatings are scraped off to prevent toxic fumes during cutting. And what's left is the raw metal skeleton of the ship. Steel workers mark the cutting line directly on the hull. Flat surfaces are sliced with semi-automatic machines, but the curves are cut by hand. Cutting happens plate by plate, deck by deck, in a precise order that keeps the hull stable until the last possible moment. Once separated, the bow is slid forward using massive self-propelled transporters. This is done incrementally to ensure no part still remains uncut. Then it's pulled further apart. Depending on the shipyard, the bow is sometimes ballasted and floated out of the dry dock and tied to a pier. This happens mostly if the dry dock is small and has limited space for all the separate segments. The space left behind isn't empty for long. In smaller dry docks, the new segment is now towed in. But in bigger facilities, it's rolled into position since it's already by the side, just waiting to be added. Now, here's something critical. Before the midsection is welded in, surveyors set up what's called a total station. It looks like a camera on a tripod, but it's really a high-precision laser instrument. By bouncing lasers off reflector targets placed on each segment, they check alignment, angles, even deviations down to the millimetre. If anything's even slightly off, the welds won't hold properly. And at sea, that's not a risk anyone takes. So every move is double-checked verified and adjusted until the alignment is perfect. Once in position, rough edges are filed smooth and welding begins. Deck to keel, end to end. What was three separate parts is now one solid hull. Then come the systems, wires, pipes, ducts, all meticulously reconnected and tested. The stretched ship isn't just floated out, it goes through full sea trials like a brand new build. Engineers push the throttle to measure top speed, throw the rudder hard to test manoeuvrability, perform crash stops to check braking. Stability gets rechecked, often with a fresh inclining experiment to see how the ship behaves with its new length. Even vibration patterns are measured again, especially on cruise ships where passengers' comfort matters. Below deck, inspectors listen for new noises feel for resonance and check that the propulsion shaft still spins with perfect alignment. Fuel consumption is logged, emissions measured, every system benchmarked again. Because even small changes in weight or layout can ripple across the ship's entire behaviour. Only when it passes all the checks, from class societies, flag states and its own engineers, does the ship return for final outfitting. Cabins rebuilt. Carpets reinstalled, furniture back in place. So here's the question some people ask. Would I trust a ship that's been sliced in two? The thing is, ships are already built this way. Modern shipyards construct vessels in massive blocks. Bow, stern, superstructure. Each built separately, then joined with precision welds. So when a ship is stretched, engineers aren't doing something unfamiliar they're following the same modular construction logic they've always used. The only difference? This time, they're extending a life instead of starting one. And this isn't some new experiment. Remember that USS Cimarron I mentioned earlier? Let's take a look at what made that work. 
The early 1990s. A US Navy fleet oiler gets sliced open and lengthened over 108 feet. This was part of a military jumboization program designed to boost fuel capacity. It worked! The stretched Cimarron performed reliably post-modification. In 2018, the Silver Spirit, a luxury cruise ship from Silver Sea, underwent one of the most iconic stretches in modern maritime history. At the Fin Cantieri shipyard in Palermo, the vessel was cut cleanly in half. A 15-metre midsection was inserted, adding 34 suites, a new restaurant and expanded public areas. But it wasn't just about luxury. The upgrade improved weight distribution, slightly enhanced stability and reduced energy consumption per passenger. The transformation took just over 60 days. When the ship set sail again, guests couldn't tell where the surgery had taken place. Silver Spirit isn't alone. From enchantment of the seas to Norwegian wind and windsurf, cruise lines worldwide have embraced stretching as a proven strategy for extending vessel life, improving capacity and adapting to passenger demands, without building from scratch. Stretching a vessel delays scrapping. It reduces waste, cuts emissions and adapts vessels to modern expectations. And not every ship can handle it. But when the numbers add up and the steel is sound, stretching isn't just an option, it's the future. Because sometimes, the most sustainable way forward is making the old new again.